everybody welcome back to another my name toys video today we are back with a brand new wwe ultimate edition review on the brand new target exclusive wwe legends ultimate edition batista figure what a legendary figure and what a legendary hunt i had to go on to obtain this figure man i am so excited to sit down and review this figure i am excited to have this in my possession and i don't want to be dramatic i don't have it out of the packaging yet but this may be one of my favorite mattel figures ever made now I had to go through leaps and bounds to obtain this figure. I had to go to 30 different targets, call 100 different people. I called the corporate office a couple times. I had to go through everything to get my hands on this figure, and I finally got my hands on it. And I'm happy to say that I actually have three copies of this figure so far, and I'm probably not done yet. Nonetheless, man, look at this beautiful figure right here, man. Everybody that has this in their possession, I mean, we have been through the ringer trying to obtain this. I'm sure if you have this figure in your possession, you probably went through similar circumstances, but between the street date being September 9th and people getting actually rejected at the cash register because it wouldn't go through and the manager just said, give me that. You got freaking Swipered from Dora the Explorer at the cash register. Hopefully this thing will get pushed out to retail and if it's not in your stores yet, it should be very, very soon. I'm gonna go back probably this weekend or maybe this week sometime and try to obtain a couple more copies possibly because I love the look of the figure. I think the packaging's outstanding. I'll probably keep a couple on ice and open them up for these head sculpts. I love it. So we're gonna do all those things, man, but here's the front of the packaging. You guys can see it's a little bit different than the Ultimate Editions of regular. It seems like the, the different exclusives and stuff have like the more reddish tone. I could be wrong about that. What I want to say, the regular Ultimate Editions are usually white with red, and these are red with white, if that makes sense. But you get the figure here, different accessories, t-shirt, multiple hands, World Heavyweight Championship, Ultimate Edition logo down here. On the side, you get a beautiful image of Dave. At the top right here, you get the Legends logo, which I think is a really sweet touch. And it kind of makes me sick that they're using this on guys that I grew up watching now, so I'm officially old as dirt. On the back, you got a beautiful image of Dave, Batista here, Legends logo, some info read. You got a great image of the animal right there. Nice little read cut right there. If you'd like to read it, you can pause it right now. On the side of the packaging, you get Batista here, and you also get Batista up there, Ultimate Edition logo, and that pretty much wraps up everything about our packaging, man. I am so excited to break this thing out. One of my favorite wrestlers of all time, a guy that I adored growing up, and now here I am reviewing this beautiful figure, man. With all that being said, we have to unleash the animal and get him out of his packaging. Here is Batista out of his packaging looking quite magnificent, man. Having a lot of fun with this figure already. Posing around all those different things. I will say it's not perfect by any stretch. We are going to dive into all my thoughts on those things. We're going to cover the things that I do like about the figure, but we're also going to cover the things that could have been done a lot better, and we are, of course, going to dive into all those things. Talk about the things that don't like, get into all the details of the figure, but of course, guys, you know we're going to cover the accessories first, and then we're going to run it back and take a closer look at the animal himself. So with that being said, let's get into everything you get when you purchase this Ultimate Edition Batista. So getting into Batista's accessories, man, this is everything that you will get with Batista, including your interchangeable heads, your interchangeable hands, all those different things are right here in front of you. Now let's go ahead and start off with the World Heavyweight Championship. This is a title belt we've seen quite a few times. I wish we would get a new mold, you know, but at least it's the accurate championship, I will say. We've seen this quite a number of times before. I'd love to see a new one, but I do love the gold paint on it and everything. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it because what we've seen, we've seen this quite a number of times. I may have like 40 or 50 of this championship of my collection so adding three more next up we do have his cloth accessory which is this classic batista t-shirt which is so sick it looks very good it says the animal on it what i don't get is why we keep flip-flopping back from the velcro to no velcro maybe it's because you know this one didn't have a graphic on the back so he, it, you know they thought that it didn't really matter which i guess it doesn't if there's no graphic on the back but guys like stone cold you know any shirt that features a back design i feel like this this needs to be a thing of the past this doesn't need to exist unless there's no graphic I think this should not exist. I think, you know, for John Cena, guys like that that have that graphic on the back, I think the Stone Cold Steve Olsen is the way to go. But I am very happy to have a version of this shirt in my in my cloth collection. This is sick as hell. I think it looks awesome. Outside of that, we do get two different contracts. They both actually feature different texts. You guys can see the WrestleMania 21 logos. You got the dotted lines. You got the WWE logo. You can actually read the contract if you get close enough there. And it says, from the desk of Mr. McMahon, this contract is to guarantee that the world title match between Batista and Triple H takes place at WrestleMania 21. All parties have agreed to above conditions. And that's on the Raw contract. And then on the SmackDown contract, it says from the desk of Mr. McMahon, this contract is to guarantee that the world title match between Batista, JBL, and John Cena 
takes place at WrestleMania 21. All parties have agreed to these conditions. Also on the SmackDown one, it's actually a very nice detail. This is exactly how the clipboard looked. Even this like darker logo or background behind the SmackDown logo is perfection. Gotta love that classic Raw logo too. How freaking beautiful is that? And then outside of your contract, you also get four pairs of interchangeable hands and three interchangeable head sculpts. For your interchangeable hands, you do get your fisted hands. Nice skin tone on these. Same sculpt we've seen a million times. You get your mic holding hands. Same thing as before. You know we've seen these a million times. We're still getting this mold. I wish we'd do away with this mold, but you have your Rock Just Bring It style hand, your Ricochet, Kawhi Leonard handshaking hand style deal here. And then what would this segment be without the classic thumbs up, thumbs down? And not only that from this segment, this is also his signature Batista bomb hand, so that's cool. But I love the like this is iconic with this segment, and this is just what, I don't know, man. This is just a superstar making segment that they did here, and this just capsulates it in figure form. Then you get three heads. First head is the smirking head or the smiling head, which I like a lot. I think my eyes may be, eh, I mean, I don't think they're perfect in, you know, like in perfect location, but it's not bad enough for me to like be upset about it. You guys can see there, it's like him smirking with the thumbs up, you know, he's sitting there holding the contract like this. Very nice likeness on these. I think these are excellent. These are three brand new head sculpts, by the way, so that's awesome to include with this Batista. And then you have the thumbs down expression where he lets Triple H know that he just effed up. And I love this. I think the seriousness of it, I think it works perfect. Like, golly, the head shape, the hair shape, the expression, the likeness to Batista from that era is perfection. I think this is awesome. I love this head. Then you have your yelling, screaming expression for Batista. And I love this one, too. I, I, I low-key wish his eyes were open, but, you know, you can use this for your pissed-off Batista, your entrance Batista. This, this encapsulates that perfectly as well. So he is yelling there. I think it's great likeness again. I'd love to see this head sculpt remade, but with the eyes open one day, I think that would be awesome. But this is still beautiful. I think this is great. I don't know which one's my favorite. Probably just the straight pissed off one, but this yellow one is sick as hell too. So diving into Batista himself, man, I love this. I think, again, we've covered the head sculpts, but I still think it looks fantastic on the body. Uh, I think the body choice is solid. I will say it looks a little bit wide. You know, I don't think that's perfection in any stretch. I do like the way the tattoos look, though, like the way that it's got, like, the holes in it and stuff like that, you know, with, like, the skin breaks and stuff like that. That is how his tattoos looked back in that time. He may have gotten it fixed since then. He does have his tattoos over here. This is before you know, Batista was completely shredded in tattoos. He's got his beautiful sun tattoo around the belly button right there, which I always liked. Psych. On the back, you got the big back tattoo, which looks insane. And then this is kind of what I've noticed on these figures is they have these like ripples on the butterfly joints, which I think is very, very odd. Super odd how he has these like, uh, I don't even know what to even call that, like striations. Like, I don't even know. Like if he flexed, that probably was accurate, but it's still weird. It's definitely a weird thing to add to the figure. I feel like if it were just flat, that would be great. The tattoo does continue, which is great. And the, the tattoo continues if you do this way. So that that's really awesome there that they included that detail. Going Going down into the trunks, I love these trunks. He also has his red elbow pads on there, but these trunks are awesome. This is actually his New Year's Revolution 2005 gear, but the boots are different. He didn't wear these boots with this attire, but it looks good. I like the little flame decal you got on there. The white trunks, you guys know how I feel about white attires, but they, th those look good too. I don't know if he wore this as a single star as well. He probably did, but I don't think he did. He may have, but I don't think he did, but uh, this is his New Year's Revolution 05 gear, which was before he turned on Triple H and, you know, had the match there at WrestleMania. So you got Batista back there in the red, black, and white. Looks insane. And then going down, you got your regular Batista legs. You do have the big red knee pads there, which I think I'm going to switch out for smaller ones. These are probably more accurate, but I just like the way that the other ones look, and they allow for a better pose and stuff like that. And then this is my biggest gripe with the figure outside of the muscle striations on the back of the butterfly joints. He has the Hall of Champions boots as far as this part is concerned, which isn't accurate. He did have, like, regular wrestling boots on like we discussed. But what gets me is they attack. Attached Ultimate Edition, I want to say this is Ultimate Edition Kane or Undertaker feet. So they didn't have, you know, like Ultimate Edition Triple H feet would have been smaller and they would have had the, the laces on the boots. So instead of doing that, they gave him the Hall of Champions boots like up here and then they gave him Kane slash Undertaker Ultimate Edition feet, which make his feet really big looking. So they do have the toe articulation there, but his feet are big, man. Like it's not a huge deal, right? Like look at him here. 
here. You can't really tell, but his feet are definitely big. If you get this figure in hand, he has big feet. Now, the only way you could have fixed this is if they would have given him Triple H Ultimate Edition boots because those are the regular boot mold. They have the toe articulation. It would have been Ultimate Edition articulation, and it would have been accurate boots. But I do kind of like that they gave him these boots because these boot this boot mold is kind of hard to come by. So if you wanted to do a fix-up of something like that, you would have to have a few different figures. However, at the same time, it's not completely accurate to the to the match they were going for unless he wore this gear at a later date that I'm mistaken. However, the Bigfoot issue does exist, so they would have had to sculpt new feet or they would have had to not given him Ultimate Edition style feet and just plugged Hall of Champions real boots in here. For your Batista figure comparison, here is the Hall of Champions Target exclusive Batista up next to the Target exclusive Ultimate Edition. And I think they did a really good job on the Ultimate Edition. They modernized it. You know, you guys could see that he's a tad taller. His tattoo's a bit bigger, makes it look more accurate. Uh, I, I like it. I like it a lot. You guys can see what I'm talking about on the boots here. Like, here's a here's a shot of the feet. You guys can see how much longer the feet are right there. So it's definitely a thing, but it is cool to see these. I honestly would like to, you know, crack this torso. Put this whole upper over here, or possibly put these boots over here just to see what that looks like, but I'm not sure. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do, but it is cool to see both of these Batistas up next to each other. And for the rest of your Batista figure comparisons, guys, here's the Elite 30, the Elite 72, the Ultimate Edition, the Elite 33, and the Elite 2. Now, I do have the Elite 6 over there, but I, I didn't get him down here. I figured these were our best comparisons right here. And I think that this figure would look really sick with the Ultimate Edition head sculpt on it. And of course, there's other head swaps you could do here, but I think this is pretty fire. Oh, uh, yeah. That figure's boots are very loose. And then for our best iteration of Evolution, this is kind of what we're left with, man. I mean, I know that you gotta have like a mixture of different eras and timelines here, but this is kind of our best makeshift Evolution you can make. You could put like a better body and head sculpt on this Ric Flair over here, or use like the suited old man body, or do some different things you could do with Ric Flair over here. But as far as I'm concerned, this is probably your best iteration here. It could be more accurate, but just straight up releases by Mattel. This is what you got. And I know that we have the Ruthless Aggression Batista come which is going to be a little bit more accurate. We did. We definitely need a Triple H, man. We need a Triple H with handlebar mustache from 2004 and 5. That's what I'm waiting for. I'd love to see an exclusive Evolution 4-pack. I think that'd be insane. Maybe in all their suited bodies, all the guys in suit. I think that would do great because you'd have your people that want it for just, you know, just the suited characters. Then you'd have some people that love Evolution and then it would complete a whole faction. There's just a lot of things left on the table for Evolution here that you can do, but this is kind of, you know, what it would look like if you put all four of these up next to each other. And, you know, you can customize and make them a lot more accurate, but this is kind of what we have factory stock from Mattel. But I think that pretty much wraps up this Ultimate Edition review of the brand new Ultimate Edition Target Exclusive Legends Batista, man. I love this figure a lot, man. I, I really can't tell you how much I love this figure. So much so that I may even do a photo shoot with this figure because I, I just love it. I love the figure. I love everything about it. This moment in time of this Batista is super special to me. One of my all-time favorite segments, feuds, character creations, all of that wrapped up into one, man. This is just one of those figures that encapsulates that man it's like a photo in time of one of my favorite parts of wrestling ever so that is uh, how how highly i praise this figure and just this moment in time for this it's just beautiful but i love this figure man i think if you can get your hands on this go absolutely get your hands on this batista figures first of all are very hard to come by in the first place we don't get them a whole lot and now that we're starting to trickle more out man i'm getting my hands on any batista i ever find i'm buying it man that's just where i am because for a long time, we just had, what, the Elite 2, the Elite 6, and then you had your Elite 30, and then you had your Elite 33, and then you had your Elite 72. So when these guys come out, you got to get your hands on it. Like, go look at the Hall of Champions Batista right now. Very hard to get your hands on in itself. So anytime I see this Ultimate Edition Batista, I'm probably going to buy it, man. With all the accessories you get, with all the head sculpts, with all the fix-ups and customs that could be made using this, yeah, I think it's easy to say this is one that I got to have a lot of. One of my favorite Mattel figures ever, man. That is no iffies. It does have its problems, but I think that you need to grab it. It needs to be a staple in your collection, and I would use this. You could use this as an Evolution Batista, unless you want to wait until the Ruthless Aggression figure comes out, or you could even use this as a Singles Batista in your Ruthless Aggression shelf. But I love this figure, man. That is going to wrap it up. You cannot get this at Ringside Collectibles. This is a Target exclusive, so you do have to get this on Target. You have to get this at retail at Target. I don't think it's available online just yet. You may have to go in the aftermarket, which does suck, but it's absolutely worth the pickup. Go grab it right now. I love this.
this figure. Anyways, man, that is going to wrap up the review. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I would love to know what you think of this Batista down below. Do you agree with my gripes or do you think that my gripes are out of pocket? What are you guys thinking? Let me know all the things down in the comment section below, man. But this is a this is an adored piece and I'm going to have a ton of fun with this guy. It is just beautiful. Just an excellent piece just spinning around right now. Just look at it. It's the animal. It's, it's, it's perfection. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. And I guess don't cross the line. Like what? Who crossed the line in this scenario? I guess these boots down here? What's up with that? You crossed the line. I've been